We are back for another edition of the Wits Up Weekly Grind, and um, I think she's got another plane to catch, or she's she's at least packing for something. She's always packing for something. Uh, we're going to invite uh, Sid back to the Weekly Grind this week, see what she's up to. She's got some news, and I think it's going to be very obvious when you see her in just a second. So if you can put your hands together for the lovely Laura Sid. Siddle, unmuted, here you are. <laughs> Hello. You still need that like uh, sound app machine for the round of applause to uh, kick I in. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, you can see my mic just here. So I was telling someone the other day, this T-shirt's way too low. It's not too <laughs> um, <laughs> I was, um, so you know how I like a bit of trash TV I was telling people the other day about how I rewatched Beverly Hills 90210. This is quite a few years ago now, and I re I downloaded it, rewatched it, and the first season, so many times you see the boom mic come into frame. Yeah, no way. Awesome. Is that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh so my God. Yeah. if it's okay for Beverly Hills 90210, it's okay for the Wits Up Weekly Grind. That's fine. I can't see it. I'm more worried that you can see how messy my house is and you can see, like, my dirty washing still in the sink from lunch about probably two days ago because I've now got no food because I'm, yeah, leaving in a couple of days, which is – packing's always interesting, but when you've got one one arm, it's even more interesting. <laughs> it will be – it could be very limited packing this time. Maybe it's a, bo- a bonus, a benefit in disguise. <laughs> so, okay, with that being said <laughs> – what's this contraption? I mean, I know what it is, but... Yeah, so look, I'll, this is my uh, lovely uh, best friend called The Sling, and I've just realised, and um, sorry, my hair is pretty shocking at the moment um, because it's pretty hard to do your hair with one arm, so yeah. this is the best we get. Um, yeah, so, oh, long story short, if I can, uh, broke my collarbone last year, had it plated, took the plate out in December, recovery, everything's been going well, had some really good training blocks, just starting to kind of go, okay, I can see the fitness coming, I can see some form, I had a really good swim week last week, or week before last now, yeah. and literally woke up on Sunday morning, 2nd of February, so just over a week ago, and just couldn't move my shoulder, and um, it was in quite a lot of pain and agony, and I was, you know, as we do, we just go, yeah, it'll be fine, it just needs to ease up, I just need to loosen up, it's just a bit stiff, I've slept on it overnight, etc, etc, um, and I had a run to do, so I was like, yeah, just get out on your run and see if it, if, if, if it loosens. Um, the, 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 the trigger point, or the thing should have been when I was struggling to get my crop top on, because I couldn't actually move my arm, I kind of should have gone, Maybe this isn't going to work. Um, but got into my run kit, went out the door, started running, and it just wasn't – there was nothing kind of really going to ease and was feeling quite sick with it all. So aborted that about 300 metres. Um, again, did that whole thing. It'll ease up. It'll ease up. I've just It's just really stiff. I just need to get some physio or something on it. But it didn't really ease up all day. Ended up going to the hospital – Doctor moved it around and there was a little bit of movement or there was quite a lot of movement actually, albeit kind of stiff and we're doing it against, you know, monitoring against this arm. And she sort of sent me away going, no, I think it's it's good. It's just real stiff. You've obviously got some muscle t- tissue damage. Happy days. I went home a lot happier. Woke up Monday, still not really any better. Went back to the hospital, asked them to get x-rays, took x-rays, came back no, no, it's fine. You haven't broken it. It's all okay. We'll just book you into the soft tissue clinic. Fortunately, through friends here in Christchurch, they connected me with a shoulder specialist, yeah. a surgeon. He was able to go online, looked at the stress, fra- uh, looked at the x-rays and then kind of gave me a ring and was like, are you sitting down? Yes, you have a stress fracture Ooh. in the collarbone. Um so then, and I had a CT scan on Friday, which basically kind of confirmed confirmed that. Um, what, how, where, not totally sure. I've kind of been trying to go over the last few weeks since I had the plate removed to work out what I've done, what we've done. Um, I've, I had no pain. Mm. I had no signals of this at all. Um, so it kind of real came literally waking up sort of out of the blue. I had had some sort of, 
bigger weeks of training I guess but nothing that was or I felt was overly straining it or like I said any pain um so so yeah so but it's it appears to be I had um three screws three screws and one screw in the on the collarbone with the plate and it appears to be around the screw that was kind of horizontal um that it right. seems to not quite have fused or for whatever reason um so yes so um I've decided to not replate it and not have surgery because that would be double lots of surgery again yeah and just gonna go for the natural hopefully patient's process of healing um which means yeah probably kind of immobile for about four weeks um right. I can get on the bike I've been on the bike already but obviously sitting upright supported I've been in the gym core and lower body with this obviously strapped yeah. I will be able to get on the kind of elliptical and the treadmill and things like that and the stepper as long as it's there's no motion here and it's strapped up um swimming uh, I've done I've been in the pool kicking great going around in circles yes I did the first session literally just kicking on my back with with fins I have to say with fins yeah. um I couldn't be I couldn't lean on my front there was too much pain and movement so on the back but today I was able to, with a snorkel, swim with one arm without any issues. So that was that was a little bit of a positive. Um, but yeah, it's still a bit of a struggle getting in and out of clothes and doing hair and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, wear so hats. That, yeah, I know. I need to. I need to suddenly start wearing the hats. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fun, fun and games, I guess. And um, yeah, not not the best to start to the year things you know we were just starting yeah. to see get some good good um good ticks on the board and and make some progressions julie's been absolutely amazing uh and we're all supportive so that's good um but yeah we're just going to yeah it's going to push me back obviously a, a few weeks now for yeah. the start of the year so does it change your race schedule or that's remain to be seen yeah, so that was it. That was the other thing. I literally, like the week before this happened, just booked all my first few races, booked flights. I was like, yes, I'm going over to the USA next week for training camp with the Dibbon squad. And then I was going to Boulder for a few weeks, um, which I'm still going to do um, and rehab it over there as well. Um, I was going to race challenge shepparton the beginning of april as my first race well i was doing the relay the bike leg in a relay in wanaka this weekend so mm -hmm. unfortunately i won't be able to do that but i will be the fourth member of our team which is called gin and try there's a theme going on here so i'll be the one cheering drinking gin and tonics on the side as my teammates uh we, we found a replacement biker so thank you courtney right. um and then yes yeah, so my first race was going to be challenge shepparton in april which I won't be doing now. Um, the rest of the races are um, pencil at the moment. I'm not going to make any decisions until a couple more weeks down the yeah. line to see how we go. Well, I guess a, a big positive in a shitty situation is that you've, you've got a diagnosis reasonably quickly. Um, so, you, yeah, but you're not, you're not yeah, two yeah. months down the track. Um, no, that's right. Yeah still trying yeah. to figure stuff out I uh, mean it my little rant and it was probably the state I was in last week as well is that um still when this is our career and this is our profession mm -hmm. trying to get healthcare systems to work with you is really slow and tedious and yeah. yes a lot of people were saying to me you've done really well you've got through it quite quickly yet to me I was kind of like well maybe I have but actually this is my my job and if I was an all black or a professional rugby player or a professional football player or even um an Olympic athlete and that sort of thing they would have had none of the waiting around that yeah. I had and I was still pretty quick and that's just kind of the I guess the frustration when you are so reliant on this and just trying yeah. to work yeah healthcare systems in places foreign and, and stuff like that and get that yeah. support network yeah that makes it extremely tough. Um, Mel Saltiel, obviously always watching, has just said that we need, get, need to get to Wanaka. Um, Sid's going. Uh, I won't be there, but I'm 
going to try and work on getting there next year because I do miss Wanaka. Um, and yeah, shame I can't be there for the Asia Pack champs as well. But hopefully next year we, we will work on that. I will be there. I'm now, I was going to drive over tomorrow, Tuesday. I'm now just pushing that back a day to Wednesday. So I'll be over then. Uh, partly because my flight to the US leaves from Queenstown, so I have to get to Wanaka. Gotcha. <laughs> and also, yeah. you can't, yeah, it's such a great race and a favourite that even though I wasn't going to be, I was going to be in a relay, but even now, I just, yeah, can't miss that race. Yeah, yeah, fair call. Okay, speaking of races, let's get to the two yeah. races that just happened on the weekend. We had 70.3 Dubai uh, and the Hell of the West, which is. For the first time, part of the Spirit Tri series, which we're hoping yeah. to do a little bit more about in the coming sort of weeks with you, just sort of explain a little bit more about it. Um, but let's let's head to Dubai. Uh, the winner was Imogen Simmons. Yay! So yeah, woo! There's that that sound clapping yeah. applause again. So yeah, Imogen, uh, th- amazing result at World Champs last year with a third place really like hanging tough with Danielle and Holly in that race to have third um everyone was kind of sort of vying it as the race between I guess Imogen and Helen Jenkins she was making Mm -hmm. a debut no one really you know it was Helen's first race in four years having had two kids plus back surgery so no one really knew what Helen would be like over the 70.3 but yeah Imogen just showed that she's continuing to improve and continuing to be one of those best athletes in the world over the 70.3 70.3 distance and came away with a pretty well I'm just trying to look yeah pretty solid win just under seven minutes yep. uh, clear of second place yeah yep. fantastic um and uh then over to hell of the west not not so solid it was quite a tight <laughs> contest yeah yeah I think there was eight seconds in the end but I've been trying to find the actual results and see the splits and see where where it was, but it was Kerry Morris, um, last minute entry in. So apologies, Kerry, for not giving you a bit of a wrap up in the preview. But um, sign but up Ker- so that we can do it. Sign up yeah, earlier. Right. Sign up earlier. <laughs> but she came in and took the win, which was obviously always good when you you make that last minute decision. Yeah. Um, only eight seconds or seven or eight seconds ahead of Meredith Hill, and I mean shout out to Meredith. She had a great year last year and it looks like she's continuing to improve and going to be a real force in some of the races around the world. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it was very much a Hills District Cam Watts tri-squad race. Um, But, I mean, it certainly looks like a cool a cool race to do one year. Just one of those unique local independent races. It's part of the spirit spirit try series which is a great initiative and we can talk about that um later uh yeah so i bet well done to well done to those guys yeah um the hills district without though the reigning champ sarah crowley who was in uh thread thread bow i think Falls Creek, Threadbow, one of the one of those. doing a trail race that she won that she won but it looked horrible yeah. I don't... <laughs> and they were like what yeah every every bit of clothing item i think you could wear that wouldn't be australian summer you guys are having crazy crazy weather crazy weather all over the place um and actually someone was telling me that um like when there's a, a lot of bushfires it actually affects the weather systems um i don't know exactly how it all works but that makes sense um, but just touching on that as well, um, just to wrap up the Pete Murray and Caroline Stephan initiative, which was the Try for Bushfires campaign, they ended up raising, and I actually forgot to write it down, but I think it was around $35,000, which was, I think he was hoping to maybe get twenty, but they ended up with thirty-five k. Um, and we had someone bid on our items as well, which we've got to get to them. Um, so huge, huge thank you for the for the support to everyone who got involved with that. The people that gave the items for donation uh, for auction, and then obviously the people who um, who bid on them as well. We've got to welcome Paul Healy to uh, the viewing platform. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Um, what are we? Mo- oh, okay. Um, changes to the Ironman New Zealand schedule has been. <laughs> Front and center in the world of triathlon chitter chatter. Um, first of all, can you just give us a quick explanation as to what what's happened uh, in terms of the schedule changes? 
Yeah, it's been uh, going crazy, as with all of it. You know, we're about four four weeks out now from Ironman New Zealand, so nerves and uh, tensions with athletes are certainly on the high. What do you mean? Um, athletes are like, so chilled. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Ironman New Zealand, uh, one of the, the longest running Ironman races. The last couple of years, it's seen a 70.3 race, but it's always been a very small event, just sort of capped at 400 people, very much second fiddle. The Ironman race starts and then the 70.3 has started after the Ironman race. Um, this year, several reasons i guess there's one um a lot of the other races in ironman in in oceana have a 17.3 and a full distance and the 70.3 distance goes first so we look at ironman australia port macquarie yep. um uh cairns i think is the same bustleton's the same they have both races and the 70.3 goes first in new zealand it's always been the other way around the full distance has always kicked off the day yep. um yeah so what they've done though, they've now put the 70.3 race to start first. This caused quite a lot of controversy and uproar and et cetera, et cetera. And to be fair to people, I don't think, you know, Ironman, Oceana, Ironman New Zealand are a fantastic team. They normally do things so well. They normally do communicate everything and really engage with athletes and community. I think they dropped the ball here. Um, and I will say that to start with. Um, and so, Yes, so basically it, everyone was up in arms that they've changed it over. But to give them their due, they have come back, they've posted, they've addressed it, they've kind of held their hands up and said, yep, sorry, we made a balls up, we probably didn't communicate it the best way. But they've given quite a good explanation as to why they've changed it. Um, yeah, they were pretty transparent um, yeah. in their uh, post. Check it out on Facebook, the Ironman yeah. New Zealand Facebook page, where they have they've, – They've gone into quite an amount of depth to explain yeah. their reasons, which I, I respect as well. And I do yeah. think, um, you know, everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got a social media platform to give their Always. opinion, and that's fine. Um, but it, some people struggle to think outside of their own sort of... Yeah. it's You know, the full distance is still the day, okay? Yeah. The, you know... It's it's the world champs in Topor in November. There's been a massive demand for slots, yeah. um, and so they've had to increase, or they have increased the size of the seventy point three field, and yeah. hence they've decided that the better decision, safety and logistics wise, was to put that race first. Yeah. This the only thing I think is a shame about that. There's been this huge increase in number of slots, which they've expanded the seventy point three race. Sadly, they haven't increased the number of slots. So there's still, I, I don't think, so there's still only the same slots as there was going to be for the original race, which I think is a shame when you've got this sudden three times as many entrants. Yeah, that's a lot, yeah. And that's kind of a lot. But, you know, they've said just, yeah, logistically transport, they have changed the bike course as well for the the race, which was changed for the full distance. Um, they trialled that back in December. It does kind of make more sense again from a logistics perspective um in the full distance in previous years there's been a section where you sort of have to cross over from yeah. left to right of athletes and do you know what it, it, it's totally fine and it makes sense when you're in it when you're on the road doing it but it does cause a few people a few headaches when they're trying to explain it oh, but yeah. now you yeah, but now there's no need for that. It's just two complete loops. There's no crossover. So yeah. I think it's going to be good. And you know what? That race is still amazing. There's still going to be awesome support. The 70.3 athletes will be done earlier so they can get out and support the the Ironman guys. Um, yeah. The cutoff the cut time stays the same, of course. It just means that everything's shifted back. So now, you know, the party yeah. will be going to a 1 a.m. and not yeah. finishing at midnight. So, yeah, but it's still... I don't know, maybe think of it. Uh, uh, and, and some people said, oh, you get an extra hour in bed. It's never going to be the case because you can't sleep anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you will yeah. all be fine. It's still going to be an amazing day. It's exactly. still going to be awesome. You're going to have an absolute blast. The best volunteers in the world. And, yeah, it's going to be great. Absolutely. Um, just quickly, Trish, Trisha Totten says, Aloha, yeah. Sid. Hi, Trish. <laughs> uh, and welcoming our good mate steph corker all the way from canadia land or is it america Where, whereabouts are you from steph soon to be coming to new zealand i think 
I hope so. Steph, are you coming? Yeah. Please. Have she, has she booked her flights yet? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. We'll find out soon. And this also susses out whether she's actually listening to us as well. Leave us a comment. Okay. On to some other news, which is... Ha- so, sorry? No, well, I was going to ask, because we've had a conversation off air anyway, because I was telling you off about your poor diet the other day how (laughs) and I listened to the Carrie Lester podcast uh, as well which she's an absolute legend um how is the rate my food going so she's posting quite a bit of she's doing quite well she is doing quite well she's come to the social media party yeah and I'm I'm liking it so now I I feel like I need to comment on all of her posts now I mean there's not thousands but and yeah, and the, the funny thing is, I did some. I think I might have said on one of the other podcasts, I did some cooking a few weeks ago, and I've taken loads of pictures, but I haven't posted them yet. So now, I, maybe now I need to do a, a versus carry, like rate my food and see how we go. <laughs> yeah, but I still haven't done any cooking for anyone no. to rate, so doesn't I surprise mean, me. I made a mean avocado on toast this morning. <laughs> Smashed it. Smashed avo. Yeah. So I can't at least, to... at least, at least that's better than takeaway. Yeah, I haven't. You could always, it. you could always rate, you could always get takeaway and then call rate my food and pretend you cooked it and see what people said. Yes, <laughs> yes. on to it. Or just, I'm surprised you don't just take Brett's food, Chef Breddy. Pretend yeah, it's uh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I podcast. try to get him to make more food at night for the next day. Which actually he did do last night. So I've got some paella in the in the um, fridge. Very good. Did I say that right? Paella? I think that's how yeah. you pronounce it. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Other news. We, oh, no. So just back to the podcast. podcast. Yeah. So we've had, well, we had my podcast. We had Carrie Lester's last week as well. Coming up this week is Jess Learmont, who is. Can't wait for that one. Absolute <laughs> pisser. She is yeah. one of the funniest people I've ever had the pleasure of chatting to. I thought that Brett Irwin, husband, Brett Irwin was laid back. This woman is so laid back, it's hilarious. Uh, I actually had her questioning whether she was too laid back. It was so funny. <laughs> anyway, With a uh, strong northern accent as well. The, half the time I, I had to get her to explain to me what she was talking about because I didn't understand. <laughs> and it, yeah. Anyway, it was great. I'm really looking forward to publishing. That one will come out Friday uh, and hoping to catch up with Heather Jackson this week. I say hoping because we've been trying to catch up for weeks. Which she's lost in the snow, isn't she, from what I can tell from social media? Well, she was meant to be doing a gravel race. But, but it I looked think... like a gravel come snow. It looked amazing. Yeah. But then I saw Sarah True post something and it, something was cancelled in bolt. Anyway, I don't know. There's all this other stuff happening. Um, but anyway... We tried to catch up last Thursday for a chat and Frankie decided that she didn't want to sleep. So after all the toing and froing, I had to shut it down. And I was saying to my best mate, I just I hate being so unprofessional. And of course, most people, 99% of the people who I deal with understand that I'm trying to run a business and, you know, have Frankie and everything, and they're really good, but it's still I still don't like being unprofessional and it's, you know, it's not her fault that I chose to have a kid, you know, so her time's valuable as well. And I think that's what I really struggle with. Uh, But anyway, so Heather Jackson coming up the following week. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, just we've got to get through the rest of this Um, and I hate to brush over it, but I don't have that much information about it. But last week we saw that Kaiser Sali was stabbed in her backyard. Thankfully, she's okay. She's recovering fine, but horrendous. Who who was it? Was it, um, who was it who had a stabbing as well? There was another triathlete a few years ago. Sophie Goose. Goose? Sophie Goose, Goose. that's right. Yeah, Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. When she was out Um, training. And she's Belgium, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, we just saw on, on, again, social media, um, Kaiser looked like she got stabbed, looked like she got away so, so lucky yeah. and also just showed the type of person she is. Um, her latest post, uh, she was up and about, she's out of hospital, but just her attitude of 
there's no anger there um it's just it's nobody's fault and it's everybody's fault i think is kind of what she said um but yeah we do wish all the best to to kaiser for a good recovery yes far out yeah yeah scary scary i mean that's just especially somewhere like you know i'm assuming she was at home in finland it kind of seems a nice quiet lovely place yeah who knows who knows knows. the world's a bit messed up um okay just last two things we so with the patreon website um if you decided to become a top tier uh supporter a special edition supporter you got access to a brand new wits up cap um and i've had a few issues with the um distributors whatever but we finally have them here and they will be going out this week to our wits up supporters Ooh, and look at those look at that silver edition Woo! only i want to say only 50 made but there's actually 52 because brett and i will have one each oh uh, damn <laughs> so they'll be going out to our top tier uh wits up supporters and you can still become uh one of those top 50 wits up supporters we've still got a few spots left uh but we also got the traditional wits up flat peak caps done as well they'll be available on the shop soon ish once i've got all the back end system done for the shop um, Paul Healy has just said thoughts on Melbourne 70.3. Unfortunately, I think it's too close to Ironman WA for him to do. Great question, Paul. Um, so when, now this, it's, when is it? <laughs> is it two weeks before 70.3 worlds? worlds or one, it could be one week before 70.3 worlds. Uh, I mean, I, th- I think from that, pers- that perspective, it, if it's two weeks before, it's a great opportunity for athletes over here. They're perhaps hoping that some of the pros might race, uh, Melbourne, as a tune-up before, it's not a pro race? No pro race. There we go. It's not for the pros. Maybe it's for the age groupers as a good tune-up race before uh, 70.3 Taupo if people have travelled from all over the world. Um, it's not really a, – it's a totally different race in terms of terrain and things for yeah. for a tune-up for, for Taupo or Taupo. I should say it is more suited to probably a good race as a – break up in your training for Ironman WA in terms yeah. of the flat flatness of the course and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, if it sounds like it's, it'll be then two or three weeks out from WA, um, which is can be seen as a great opportunity, like just a, one of those last big hit outs. Um, or, or an but, opportunity you know, to test what test you want things, to do race day. Race. So, yeah. you know, you, you race, race at yeah. Ironman pace or Iron Distance yeah. pace, I should say, yeah. uh, and test out nutrition, yeah. making sure you're comfortable on the bike, your race kit, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it doesn't have to necessarily, uh, from an age grouper's point of view, it doesn't necessarily have to be a smash fest. That do the swim sense. bike hard and do your run at Iron Distance pace. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah, I think you're right. Kind of good day to just test out a few of those, and also uh, for Australians and New Zealanders who are sort of coming out of that uh, out of the Southern Hemisphere winter. Just they've probably not had a race in a while, so good to yep. kind of blow a few blow a few cobwebs away. Yep. But you know, it's it's just each their own into what they want to do in leading up to a race day. Yeah, and obviously talk to your coach. Talk to your coach, yes. <laughs> okay, finally, question of the week. Let's try and whip this out quite quickly. What is the silliest thing you've done in racing? I'm going to throw it back to you first because you <laughs> did say you had a good story. <laughs> so my, mine is a really long story, but very condensed version. Uh, I, first year at Challenge Roth, uh, super excited <laughs> to go over there. Uh, I had just had my... I can't believe I hadn't even thought this would be the story. Of course. Um, I had a DI2 bike. It was when uh, DI2 was quite new. Um, and I didn't recharge my batteries once I, I got there because I thought batteries lasted for like six months. Uh, turns out it didn't. And with 60k to go on the bike, my battery died. So I had one, uh, one gear for 60k's of a pretty hilly sort of undulating course. But the kicker is I got given that much shit for being an idiot that the next year I took a photo of my battery and basically went, I've charged it, everyone, you know, shut up. And then 
took the battery down race morning because I charged it overnight, took it to put it on the bike. Three quarters of the way through the swim, I'm like, my battery's in my bag. I haven't put it on my bike. And it's a separate transition. There's two transitions in Roth. So my bag with the battery in it was on a truck on the way to T2. So I got out of the swim and I'm yelling at all these Germans. You know, you got, who's got a spare bike battery? Because they're just kicking around. Um, and after spending half an hour faffing around in transition, I see, so as you know, you go up a steep incline and you turn right and you're on the course. I went up the incline, turned left and went to the bike shop and thank God it was closed because it's what, seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Uh, yeah. And the owner happened to be there and he went in and got me battery. So I jumped back on the bike, but yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I'd totally forgotten that would be a story you'd tell having sort of given you so much shit and brought it up quite a lot of times. Brought it up that many times that the first present you got, Frankie, was a Challenge Roth onesie that had <laughs> a battery on it that said um, me, energy, which is it was green. Energy levels or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then my parents yeah. was, and I was like, oh, well played. Yeah. yeah. So even worse, though, I hadn't even registered that was kind of insinuating that it was just that's what was on sale with challenge ross with what was the baby yeah perhaps they knew perhaps they did it uh, uh, funny oh boom boom kira sidel is watching is that how you say last name sidel siddle sidle no sidle. hi kira not siddle get your own surname <laughs> <laughs> okay quick one um, go you've got 40 yeah. seconds for my story no, the only thing I can think of was my one of my first races, having moved to Australia, City to Surf, uh, iconic running race, 14 kilometres. I came from an athletics track background, short distance, hadn't really done anything long, was training for this. Basically did the, had no idea of pacing. It was before I started triathlon, basically set off far too fast, thought it was easy, got halfway, started dying, um, collapsed. 200 meters from the finish line uh got carried over the line by two police women made the national news everything looks like i'm completely out of it on drugs yep. um yeah and i ended up in medical i was the first person in medical though apparently which obviously was a claim to fame i was a winner at something that day um, and the best thing about it was i was training with a friend and we were going to train run together and then i'd obviously was going sort of that got excited and was going that bit fast and she was like yeah yeah no you carry on you carry on you're looking great keep going um and we'd been planning to get under the hour and she ran past me whilst I was on the floor collapsed <laughs> um yeah. and she got under the hour and I think I got actually 65 minutes being carried over the line so I was you're quite right. just that yeah yeah but that was my it, it's not so much a silly thing but just one of those learnings of uh, pacing of naivety when you don't haven't done long distance racing ever as long as you learn from your mistakes like I did yeah that's right what was it is it do it <laughs> doing it I, once is a mistake and twice is sign of stupidity or something like that somebody's gonna there's some comment there's some phrase that's one you calling me stupid yep yeah yeah all right uh, Boz on. has just uh, signed in hi Mark Bosworth how do you do? Um, we I can see you. There. What's that? I can give you. Hello, Marcel and Norrish. It's got Norrish in there as well. I'm just looking at who's signed in. Brad oh, George, thank see, you. They, they don't all pop up on mine. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, maybe that's because I'm, I don't know, were they friends with them? Ah, oh, maybe. Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to sign out. Are you and I going to keep chatting off, offline? Yeah, right. can well, you? Not offline. Off live, Facebook live. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, you take care. Look after yourself. Uh, thanks, for everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you back here on the same Bat channel uh, next week. Boss, say yeah. hi.